Venturing forth, you encountered a few new situations. After living the city of gold and turning it into not gold, you managed to come back into town without too much trouble, is what your initial thoughts were. Heading towards there or finding a new destination or just finding your way back had a few ways of getting there. One of you managed to spy a strange phenomenon in the place where the... You actually never figured out where that other domain was, but it doesn't matter. There was a massive spike in energy fluctuation that one of you decided to figure that out, which led you back to Haven. The other group managed to try to teleport back after discovering that one of their teammates, um, I guess hired hands, really. Um, job was done, disappeared, so they decided to head back into town. However, they were unable to actually get back into the city. After doing this, you all managed to get back, but with Halibu basically teleporting you back in the destination outside of the city. Without too much trouble, you got into trouble. Surprise, surprise. One of you managed to take down a strange puppeteering performer, and the others managed to take down some ghosts and a strange woman after transforming her into a cat. With the success of Cerberus, not Cerberus, uh, well, yeah, Cerberus did have some success, but with the success of Byroth, making a pinprick hole inside of the dome that is somehow blocking transportation to the city. It was enough to m get back into communications with Section 9, telling you that the city's on fire and currently the entire R&D department, as well as Section 9, is helping out the city. Right now, you're in trouble as you have no idea what's going on. As it stands, all of you are capable, but not exactly fully aware of the situation. But with the pinprick, Byroth was able to teleport back into the city. Cerberus is already inside, and the rest of the team last message was, do you manage to get the badge back from Cerberus as you teleported it all back in? Enter into the Section 5 department where you left your shank not sanctuary, uh, recall room back in a woman stepped out and then noticing the surroundings you saw Vera again and Maris down and maybe out Claire is barely conscious as I believe one of you cast some sort of healing on her but before that um uh, Going back to the City of Gold. <laughs> Roughly a day prior to this, Caitlin was kind of kind of stuck outside without really much to do was there something you're gonna do Caitlin <laughs> after a while go home like since I couldn't find the uh the crown again um you knew it went to the north section of where you currently are or where you're residing but you never actually just went to look for it the last thing you saw was someone entering inside of a portal, three people, and then you decided not to dive in. Looks like I'm heading north for a little bit and then going back to this, going back to home base and if I can't find it within a day or two days time. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me a perception check. The character sheet is surely struggling. This hasn't been opened in a while. It's not sure what to do with itself. Oh, my browser crashed. That's the answer. It figured out what to do with itself. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> I guess I can roll. That'd be helpful. All right. Give me a second, because I just realized I was on the same account on both my browsers, so I was wondering why the music was playing twice. Okay, Caitlin. Still loading. Sorry about that. I imagine this is actually what it was like for Caitlin a lot of the time. Just like, do, do, do. <laughs> desert, 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 desert. Perception. I finally got on my character sheet. Ah, okay, I'm going to ignore the 12 then. <laughs> oh, there was a 12? That's funny. Alright, do I roll now? Uh, click. Look at that. Still tall. That's a powerful tool. <laughs> Examining the area, you don't really seem to find anything else. You do find that the city is, uh, that the area is still made of gold. Uh, there are some fluctuating movements about. You still have a sense around you, even though you can still see. But you feel that the sand, roughly 200 yards away from you, is moving. Can Maximilian make one as well? Sure. He's, he's better at these, I swear. <laughs> just not in practice. Uh, Maximilian just sees sand being kicked up in the distance. I guess I'll check that out. Okay. From like 100 feet in the air. Heading straight towards the destination, you do see that sand is moving about. On the ground, you see giant lizard-like beings. They're like salamanders, but massive in scale. They are not stopping in this area, but they are frantically moving through it. You're not sure why, but they seem to be heading south. Compared to you, they're roughly... They're roughly adult dragon-sized. I'm not going to disturb them then. Alright. Not seeking to fight these things, you decide to just watch them or just leave them alone? Just watch them and leave them alone. Alright. They don't seem to be looking at anything. They seem to be dead set on getting out of this area. You're not sure why, looking around you, you do remember that there are creatures that turn to gold maybe from long time ago or go ahead and roll insight character she don't fail me now oh yeah there, there goes the failure or maybe there's someone going around touching people and turning them to the gold somehow someone's used this spell and is now actively turning people or creatures into gold Yike. How long do you stay here? Beyond that, um, let me roll something. Scenario five. Um, beyond that, you just see a massive beaver-like creature heading towards the south to the north, roughly 100 yards away. Currently, it's being chased by two hill giants. Hmm. Yeah, not gonna get involved with that one. Um, after my second day of searching, I'll start heading back to uh, the closest city, whether that's Noche or Haven. All right. After the first day, 
you spend the night somewhere without too much issue within within the gold or outside of the site? Um, I don't think I can actually leave the area in t within the day, could I? Because I was uh, I was looking for it. If you wanted to, um, you would have to push Maximilian. But are you in that much of a hurry? Not currently. Uh, I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll cast Tiny Hub, but that's about it. All right. Uh, as you cast Tiny Hub within the area, you spend the night. After the night ends, you realize that the entire site is now not gold. Uh, not pictured. <laughs> you still don't find your companions. You still don't see your friends, but... Uh, you're not, uh, you're a couple of yards out of here, so even if they, they were here, they're no longer here. I'll spend my final day here looking for the crown. Okay. As the middle of the day begins to continue on, you get a call immediately, uh, roughly around noon. Which is around the time that Cerberus saw that little ping, but a little earlier than that. Um, I believe her daughter's name was Penelope? Yeah, Penelope. Yes. Um, you get a call from Penelope. Currently, uh, there's a message pending in the background as she turns on her messaging stone, or sending stone. Um, in the background, you hear... Attention all citizens, right now we're about to establish a connection within the gate site. If you have anyone to communicate with, do so now, otherwise you will have a barred response outside of the city. It continues to play on repeat. Uh, Cerberus, this is specifically a sending stone that Caitlyn specifically got. The badges have limited range, but the spell, uh, I believe sending is a good distance. I don't think it has a distance. Then you're good. But specifically, Caitlyn got the sending spell in stones. So that's how that happened. The badges you get for free, so but they're weaker. Uh, anyways, apparently he calls and immediately goes, uh, Mom, um, I, I don't know what's going on, but the city's on fire. Um, and with that... <laughs> Caitlin starts running off. Okay. Um, she basically stated, uh, Ramon um, and his daughters, were, you get some cut uh, reverb feed as if the communication is slowly dying. Um, you do hear, um, at house, uh, friends here to protect. Um, and then love. And then it cuts off right there. I will... Tell her to stay with Kyle. The maid. It cut off before he could say that. It was bad. Do you try to head back to Haven? Or do you... Uh, try to find these people? Uh, people that are that I can teleport? Your friends or companions. I'm going, I'm going to Haven. All right. Um, do you come back to the site? Like, so they said that the site, like, there's teleportation going on at the site. They're trying to teleport there. Uh, it's barring teleportation and/or communications outside of the city. Uh, teleporting. You know that a while ago, Byroth did state that we have a way back if we need to. But the, but I don't. I notice that they are, they aren't coming back. Uh, you're not technically in this current area. You're a couple yards away. You can fly by and get back here, but that's up to you. You can ultimately, of course, just bypass this completely and go ahead straight for Haven. I'll I'll come through here just in case that they come back. But if if they don't, then I'm going straight to Haven. Like I'm doing like a like a flyover, not even a, like a, like a quick scan flyby while make, while pushing Maximilian to his limits. Okay. Um, and this is where I'm gonna retroactively state that Caitlyn has been there the entire time, got there right when you were teleporting into the city. Uh, 
she was currently trying to break into the dome. And then at the end, you guys all teleported it in into section five. She's always been there. Don't question it. It's just easier for me this way. Yeah, I don't know how Maximilian's getting out this door, but... Technically, Maximilian couldn't be recalled. My maximum is five extra. <laughs> you can rest in peace, Max. Um, you let a giant beaver eat your horse again. Or he just stays with the prisoner that we took outside the barrier. Yeah, that's true. Prisoner? Uh, yeah. I bypassed that, but it's one of the fights that happened. Um, here's the map. And you definitely saved against my uh, thing that I did, for sure. Oh, hello, strange people. Tangard, don't worry about it. Um, section 5. And section 5. Kalin's always five. been there, don't worry about it. She totally saved from the whole turn undead. Um, mm -hmm. Entering through section 5, you see a woman with blue hair and a strange hooded... Well, hood. Resembling that of a fox, just step outside. However, you also see Mera's Vera again, all unconscious and perhaps dead. Claire's breathing but barely conscious. Alright, healers, I've got a spell. Anyone else? I am chasing after the person that ran out. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Wait, did someone run out? Shit, yeah. Yes. Okay, before I do that, I'll use my the hell's it called? My like dagger of healing, my shard of healing, because that can target up to four people, five people. Eh. Bottom of my sheet. Up to five creatures. So I'll just pop my healing shard on anybody who's injured in this room. So that's three D four. As you look at Yeah, as you look at who's injured, who's fine and who's safe. Let's see, that's eight. Claire, you managed to bring back, but the others, the others aren't looking too good. After the healing, they do seem to be breathing, but they are not getting back up. Whatever this they person, stabilized? Whatever this person did hurt them bad, but they are stabilized to the best of their ability. Yeah, I'm going to try. Well, I used my action. I might as well chat. And then run away. All did right. you s did you see who did this? Uh, my, I I don't know. It was a woman with blue hair. Okay, you're right with chaser. Then I go chase. Uh, um, what level are you guys? Because that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I think we're level Ding. thirteen. One God three. Damn it. You you at least leveled up once. Yeah, we're level 13, we were level 12 before. Alright. Here I go leveling up myself. Alright. Halloween, as you begin to chase this woman, you realize that Caitlin just bolts out of uh, the R&D department. Don't know why, um, but the woman is running around the department, and every this place looks like a ghost site. You are literally the police, so obviously the police are in town protecting people. You don't know how she got in here. You need either someone's authority or the badge to get in. Looking at you, she is running, but almost with a smirk as if she's getting you to chase her. You do have sight on her, but do you change her now or do you wait? Because she looks like she's about to speak. How far away <laughs> She's roughly 30 feet Historical away from you. Question. She's literally walking backwards, uh, heading towards um, another room. Oh. Alright, what's the save? Wisdom saving for her. Not showing you her modifier. I have to tell you her modifier because I don't know if that passes. 
Uh, does 24 it's pass? more than one. Yep. It passes. Okay. As you cast Polymorph on her, it simply gets rebuffed as she literally puts on her hood. And immediately, the f you take note that the hood is in a way of a fox. It rebuffs upon it, and looking at you with the hood up, she simply states, Ah, oh, you might not want to do that. You might want to save your spells for the people outside of this building. Currently, our people are being attacked. You are the police, after all. You do have to protect them. As she gets through the first door. Do you follow? I fuck it, chasing after her. All right. Baroth, after hitting these people, you said you talked for a bit, right? Baroth? Sorry, yeah, um, just those few sentences, and then, if Hallyu can't catch on the broom, I definitely can't catch. Yeah, she's surprisingly quick. Um, um okay, so Relta would be the only one in here, then. Uh, Relta, looking at the exact location where you're at, you notice that the device is broken. The paperwork on the desk is ripped asunder. Whatever this person was meant to do here, they clearly did it. They just came to destroy everything. Go ahead and roll an insight. From what you can tell, they were clearly here to destroy these things. For what reason, you're not sure. But it's going to be hard to rebuild this thing without the paperwork or the proper mechanisms to do so. You're not sure for what reason, but this place is completely destroyed. This... Anybody else hurt in the room? Currently, the people that are unconscious are still hurt. They're not dying, thankfully enough, but they are not waking up. Uh, Siv is currently taking their vitals. Do. Okay. I'll go over and see if I can help Siv. I'm moving the cat, not myself. There we go. There we go. Uh, you asked Siv what you would like to do or help, and she simply states... I am not really sure. From what I can tell, they are unconscious, but they are not waking up. I... Maybe it's some sort of poison or some sort of curse was placed upon them. But without finding more information, I can't do a thing about this other than keep them stabilized. Can I roll medicine to see if I can find out what's wrong with them? Sure. They're unconscious. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> All right. Um. She then turns towards you and states, uh, "Perhaps you could help chase these guys, uh, this person down, or maybe uh, speak with Ramon. I do need to give them the report, but I don't think that's really important right now." All right. Um. I'll follow Baroth and then mount into the hallway and see if I can help out there at least. Alright. Can you easily just catch up to Baroth? Um, and Siv then begins to... It's hard to tell how she does this and you guys aren't there, but she grabs all three and drags them out of the room. Um, she leaves the one actually conscious in there with Gavin and uh, Halloway, did you hear your cat? Because I just kept it there. Yeah, the cat would have stayed and helped if it can by using the help action in whatever way. Okay, the cat, uh, Claire is down. She's not dead, but she is down. Um, the cat uses the help action to curl up into a ball and sit on her lap. Gavin looks at the area. Only her left, 
the building destroyed. Well then, um, I think I better leave. And heads out the building. As it's clear that Byroth is not going to catch up to Aliwu on her broom, he'll call in to Ramon and apprise him of the situation, get him to lock down Section 5 if possible. Getting to communication with Ramon, he simply states, A little busy right now. No one's really inside of this, the police force, at the police station, whatever. Group A, headed over to the school. Group B, finally you're back. Head over to the city streets over at uh, the West Gate. Uh, two giants. Damn. Uh, then he says, uh, then you hear a report stating, Gamma reporting in. Gamma, quickly get into the school right now. There are two frost giants into the area. Make sure the kids are safe. Then putting back to you, kind of not important right now. I'm trying to save as many people as I can. I'll have agents come back, but right now the city is literally on fire. How close is the fires to the groves? To the what? The groves of trees. You know, the ones that are connected to the chains. They're all over the place. I can't make a statistical analysis without someone in the air. And if anyone gets into the air, they'll get squatted down by the giants. We even have reports so of the market thinks. getting attacked. So we have giants inside the city? We have no idea how they got in. Are we all here in this, or is this only Byroth? This is Byroth and Rauta. Rauta was easily able to catch up to Byroth, but you can fly. Okay. Um... <sighs> okay, we'll see what we can do to help. And then I relay all that information to Hollywood. All right. As we head over to Cerberus. Um, the woman's unconscious. And you have the mask. As you look at the mask, Cerberus, you can tell that it is rather pleased. You're taking a quick uh, rest. But you do see that the spirits around that are causing the fires are still causing the fires. That's not stopping them. Uh, but the people in the city are able to evacuate. It looks like they had a specific purpose, but... You kind... Well, you had to speak with the mask. And I don't think you can do that. <laughs> But looking at you, the mask simply states, <laughs> Oh, that was fun. What do you say you put me on when we have some more fun in town? The people that, um, I wouldn't say work for, but tend to pique my interest, have decided to allow me to enjoy myself and to get as many people involved as possible. <laughs> what do you say? Cerberus looks at it still grinning and carrying on with her rest. Hey, you're no fun. Oh well, it doesn't really matter though. Just one of a collective. Eventually. Yes, eventually you will have to do something or the world will burn. Either way, I don't really care. It'll just be less enjoyable. Are you just resting? Yep. She would give it a slight curious head tilt when it mentions about the world burning, though. It's a mask. It doesn't read social cues, so it has no idea what you mean by that. So it says nothing. a little awkward. You're not as talkative as most of its, uh, let's call it slaves. 
Sucks. <laughs> Sucks for it. Yeah. It After she's rested, she's going to carry on going deeper to whatever power she can feel. All right. There are a few strong anomalies in the area. You can tell that there's a strong power uh, in a large towered building surrounded by other buildings and you see four figures in the distance. In the town square you see two massive, even bigger than the other four, not combined but bigger, uh, in the city streets just rampaging and you see small individuals attacking these things. Uh, further down you see, it's hard to tell. Uh, but in the market square, you see people attacking large lizard-like creatures surrounded by a strange orb or many orbs. And further down, you do see another sight of automatons attacking the uh, city square. Uh, not city square. Um, ba -ba 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 shopping district. I have no clue what any of that is, so I'm just going to the most powerful source. Um, are you able to sense it, or do you have to see it? Wherever she noticed that the bubble thing, ripples came from, that general direction still. That would be the city. Um, it would be within the police station. Give or take, if you can sense residue. I can try. Uh, roll and I've got things linked to power with me, so. Uh, do, do. From what you can tell, the mm, strange thing that happened within the different plane happened right above this weird building with bars reinforced. There's an R and a D on it. In front of that building, it also says police. Then I suppose that's where she will be going. Okay. I forgot to group the maps, so some of them are really far away from each other. Um, before that, I want to see what Caitlyn does in destroying her, for some reason I was going to say marriage, but she already did that. I'm sorry for dying. Uh, the last chart has something to say about that. <laughs> I mean, if you die twice, maybe he might make it up to you. Entering close to the building, you do see what appears to be four, uh, five individuals. You know four of them are part of the Section 9. Holly is a private investigator that you don't know. That was Archer. Um, Holly has a police badge on her. Mm. Three other individuals are surrounding this building, and they seem to be fighting these three off. Holly points her turns gun towards you and states, friend or foe? Uh, neither. She's running towards the door. She immediately shoots you. Go ahead and roll initiative. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yes. My first 10 for the day. Okay. Let's go with you.
You're so lucky the enemy rolled lower. Neat. As you begin to make an advancement towards the door, Holly immediately rolls up her sleeves. Taking aim, she shoots straight towards you. Plus eight. Uh, does not hit. Aiming it off of your... Are you wearing your armor? Yeah, that's why I, that's why I switched. She's, uh, she's wearing her armor. Shield up and sword out. Hitting your armor, it bounces off and does nothing. Caitlin, at the start of your turn, you take 1d4 point of damage. As your skin begins to burn... You're muted, by the way. Yeah, this is the price. I said it's the price I pay for having higher armor class. I move forward and I use the shove action on Holly. All right. Athletics versus dexterity, or I haven't used shove actually. What's that? Uh, athletics or acrobatics? Mm, her acrobatics is higher. Even with her great athletics, she still only got an 11. Neat. Yeah. All right. It just moves her five feet. Go ahead. Oh, as you push her away from the door, she shouts out, Girls, now! And immediately, I open the door. Uh, <laughs> and immediately, the because they were holding action, a gate bounces you off, and immediately, like the building, uh, Cerberus, you sense this. A dome appears from the center of the building and surrounds. Cerberus changes direction. Okay. It's gonna take you like two turns, but okay. You're fast though, so you can easily get there. Anything else, Caitlin? Because right now you're barred. Because of how they had things prepared. They were holding an action until someone tried to open the door without Holly's consent. Wow. <laughs> All right, so I don't. So I'm not. So it's safe to say I'm not at this square, right? I'm like I'm back here. You you can get to the door. You just can't open it due to the field. Uh, she'll say you won't keep me. You won't keep me from Penelope. And she Shot. uh. She immediately ignores the strange creature that is going to attack her and aims directly towards you. She, uh, make me a, make me a wisdom save or whatever, con save. Yeah, con save. She That's automatically passes. Shit. <laughs> uh, I suppose I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to charge a special thing. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna activate this and that's my turn. Alright. Um from what you can tell and how she ought to really pass, you can tell she's directed towards you, but she has fought many of things. She doesn't look you straight into eye, she doesn't uh smell you. In fact you can see that her breathing is slower and slowed down. She has dealt with things that have hypnotized her before and drugged her. She's a le well, I don't have to tell you, but she's on par with you <laughs> in skill. Hey, nice. This will be a fun fight then. It will. She's a witcher. Da, 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 da. The enemy takes its turn. Increasingly enough, you see, well, you don't see, because two of them are fighting the other two. Uh, two are fighting the others. And immediately the creature, blue in color and tone, aims straight for you. Holly's surprised by this, but immediately slashes straight towards you. Its body is malleable and swift. I want you to go ahead and roll me a strength saving throw as it begins to envelop your feet. But you move and kick with surprising force, causing it to roll back. It looks at you, doesn't really roll any gestures, doesn't say anything. You can tell then it moves its arm straight towards you and goes straight towards where your heart would be. Its attack is a plus nine. 
rolling really <laughs> terribly with <laughs> digital dice. Yeah, that's not looking so good, Chief. <laughs> but it waves around you as if nothing happened. Holly then has her hand straight, straight towards you because you literally named someone she's protecting. She moves back, giving you an attack of opportunity. Uh, where is it? Fuck. Okay, that does hit. Uh, and she needs to make me a wisdom saving throw. Haha, -ha, she passes. Uh, so she's not frightened, but she still takes that two psychic damage. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to add a smite on that as well. All right. So she takes 13 additional radiant. Great. Amy straight towards her. You use your blade and slash through. Inside your mind, you hear, oh, man. No, wait. She didn't say, oh, man. Oh, this is getting rather dull. Do be a dear and end this quickly. You don't want to play with the girl's heart. Immediately slashing through, Holly takes the damage, but continues to move back. Looking straight towards you and then the creature beside you, she states, I don't know who you are, but I have a job and I'm going to do it. She puts down her pistol and brings out appears to be a... Well, it's a shotgun. I'm not going to lie. Aiming straight towards you, I want you to go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. That does not pass. Oh no! So you take 4d6... Plus three, uh, it's not blunt damage, it's, uh, let's see. What does, um, magic missile do? Force damage, right? Force damage. Uh, force damage. Uh, 20 total. 24, gotcha. The creature next to you also gets hit, but it waves back into form. Caitlin. <coughs> Uh, she turns to this creature over here and uh, puts um, her hex on it. Uh, what's it called? Hexblade Curse. Yeah. So now I now I crit on 19, and I get some more damage. This is like an episode of Seinfeld. Just tell them who you are. <laughs> One simple conversation. Uh, yeah, that'd be easy. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> She's going to attack this creature right here. And she'll say, you're not gonna keep me from her. Well, the problem is Caitlin knows exactly who Holly is. Who the hell is Holly? You've met Holly before. The yeah, entire party I... met Holly before. The problem yeah, is the Holly party. met you without you being in your armor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I was asking. So you know it's someone to be trusted. All you literally had to do was say friend, like any reasonable person. <laughs> friend or foe? I don't understand the question. Yeah, I don't know if I didn't know who that was. Friend or foe? Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Amy's definitely a foe now. Journey does hit. Slashing straight to you, you see that the slashing damage does barely anything and wobbles back into form. Whatever these things are, typical types of damage is not working. Anything else? Uh, they're my second attack. I'm going to add 10 to that with my channel divinity. Nice. You see that divinity damage does seem to do something, but the slashing damage does near nothing. I'm going to smite as well. My last power on spell slot. Nice. It's radiant damage, so it does take effect, but two wouldn't take effect. But you do do a significant amount of damage with the after effect and thought. The creature looks towards you and immediately tries to envelop you. This time with its secondary effect. Oh, okay, that's an interesting thought. Uh, Caitlin, go ahead and roll me a another dexterity saving throw. That's not good. Immediately, it spins around you, and it's now encompassing your form. It 
it's not uh what's it called enveloping you in its form like it tried to do before but it is surrounding you immediately you are unable to move anyone has advantage on you during their turn and if you try to move you must make a uh athletics check of blank in order to get through her wall Right. So that's going to be fun. And at this point, we're going to switch over to Team A. I don't have a map for Hallway, so you're just going to be back in Section 5. I'm going to put them in the corner. Hollywood, if you can't catch them, we need eyes in the sky. They're too fast for us if you cannot catch the future too. I mean, she's not extreme distance away. Byroth and Relta, you're 30 feet from Halloween. Halloween's 30 feet far away. she again. But isn't she. <clears throat> Sorry, Halloween's on a magic broom, though, right? Isn't mm -hmm. the magic broom 60 feet? 60 feet of movement. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you're doing anything else. You can be roughly 30 feet. You can't ever close the gap but you're 30 feet away the person is 30 feet from her so she's 60 feet from you she she's fast faster than she should be if she's a normal human but from what you can tell she is not speeding up or trying to dodge you is there anything right, you're doing that... Halibu? Uh, how far is the exit from Section 5's headquarters? The exit from where you were is roughly now 120 feet away because you had to come across that area. She looked like she knows where she's going. She looks like she's wandering around in a hallway. Biding her time. I'm gonna bolt out of section 5 and go into the skies and start uh, forming Ramon of areas and locations that are being attacked, but I'm basically telling Baroff as I pass by to try and restrain her, but don't get too close because she might be up to something. Okay, do you remember that my Ramon warned me, and I would have warned you, that giants are taking targets out of the sky? Is she still gonna fly? As you fly okay. into the air, you take note that there are giants, but they're further into the city, thankfully enough. Where you're currently at, you can see a few sites. You can see a group of individuals, you're not sure what they are, but they're heading straight into the castle. Another group is heading straight uh, towards the school. Two, no, four giant creatures. Another group, two massive blue light creatures are attacking the city square. There are individuals in each of these sites so far that are fighting back, but you're not sure if they'll last. Maybe we will inform Ramon about all of these and bolt straight to the castle. Cool, but I'm not done. You see an individual on the uh, ground just running through the halls. It could just be... Um, is your passive 17? A 17, I think. Uh, you think you see Cerberus going through the streets? I mean, they're not on a job anymore, but they're running. You're not sure where. Um, further down, you do see that the shopping center is being attacked by mechanical creatures. You're not sure what they are, but currently a group of five elves are fighting them back. In the streets, you see hounds uh, fighting off and fending off. Cre no, you see hounds uh, attacking the civilians, but a group is fighting them back. But a giant orb is in the middle of them. And 
there's just chaos on the streets. Now I'm done. Do we report everything that happened to Ramon and say which areas need the help first, but then bolt to the castle? All right. And say she's going to the castle. And if I'm within, if Byroth is within 60 feet, he will cast um, Command on this individual Wisdom DC 15 to halt. All right, DC 15. Uh, wisdom? Uh, is it 15? No, sorry, it's 18. Yeah, wisdom. Passes. Curses. Looking at you, she simply said, <laughs> Oh dear, if I could pass hers, uh, pointing to the woman that's currently running out of the building. I'm pretty sure I can pass yours. You can try if you like, pointing towards Rauta, but who knows how much uh, your luck or my luck will go. Better hurry though, as she goes towards another door in the halls. Who knows who else is dying in the streets, and you could be preventing it. We tried asking her politely. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. They say, wait, stop. As she responds. She immediately stops. I run over to her. And I ask what's going on. Okay. Uh, Byroth also runs towards her, I assume. She has to move mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She stops? You get up to five feet from her, and she simply states, Right now, the city is being attacked. I had a job to do, and I did it. My secondary mission is to make sure I can get people to not do theirs. Although I don't really feel like anyone needing to die. So, whatever you plan to do, I suggest you do it. And leave me alone. Eventually, I'll just leave this area. Unless you want to keep rolling around in circles. Wait, wait. I missed the very, 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 very first bit of that. Like, what did she say? Her This was like the first part of her mission, she said? The main mission is to do her job. She didn't specify what exactly. Now that I've done it, the second part is to make sure no one else does theirs. So you can keep following me around and not help, or you can let me be, you know, eventually I'll just leave. <laughs> Is Wait, what she gave... stated. Oh, okay. Um, but who gave you this mission? Can't really tell you that now, can I? Or else I'll be, oh, uh... mm. I wouldn't say a loose end, but I will lose my life. Let's just say a group has decided to act on the city, now that they acquired access. A group has decided to act? So? That's the best I can give you. And where are you going now? Now? Now I'm just leading you astray. I'm quite literally walking into rooms, and eventually I might walk into a corner, and then I might have to blow it up. What is your name? My code name is Fox. Do we oh, still have... <laughs> do we still have, like, our regulation handcuffs? Can we just, do. like, attempt to cuff this person now that I'm within however many feet of them? Do you try? Yeah, why not? Alright. I would say roll, but you literally <laughs> but I'm can't. just gonna lose. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's dexterity based. Uh, yes, but also because of what she is. As you begin mm. to go straight towards uh, her handcuffs, immediately the handcuffs just twirl around and they don't seem to connect with anything. Oh dear. I thought you would try to do that. Well, I mean, you keep saying you're police, of course you, but okay. This is not worth my time anymore. That's what I just said. 
Okay, I'm leaving. Okay. Uh, before he says anything, uh, and giving you a hint. All right then. Goodbye. Will you be joining him, or do you care to play tag some more? Two wrapped up. Um. I'm gonna follow Vera. All right. You two also and, head out. Yeah. Like I said earlier, I want to protect those, any sort of parks or groves or clusters of trees from being burnt, because that's why I was more concerned, is if those go up, bad things happen. They are all over the place. You can wander around and find a location, but literal sections of the city are on fire. You have no idea if they're specifically targeting these sites or if they're just randomly acting. Does Hallie will give us a report of, uh, or is that just direct to Ramon? Uh, it will be directed to Ramon and to Byroff and that. Alright. Ramon would only specify and give advice to the teams that he needed out there. He knows that you're currently doing a job, so unless you specify that you need a direction, he assumes you're doing a job. Um... I guess firefighting, like I said. Alright, I'm gonna put you on a random map then. Um, but first, Halloo. Oh, everybody's got stuff going on. I also think I put you on the GM map, so give me a second. And you're there. Uh, let's go with this one. Entering inside, you do see five individuals. Right now, you see a massive square of people. You see a group of Section 9 part... Uh, individuals inside all marked with red the other four are castle guards right now they're blocking off the site and in fact some of them are basically channeling a field to not allow them to bar through however in order to do this many of them have had to be taking blows so right now they're preventing these things from getting further they are not going to last forever uh, to make this simpler, I'll go with Gerald instead of Rexler. Uh, Gerald looks towards you and states, uh, Halibu, right? I don't know what you're doing, but right now we can use your help. We have these things contained within this site, but not everyone's doing so well. Trons need healing. Um, I, I don't know. Um, and then a few people... Uh, make motions. Everyone marked in blue needs healing, or else you assume they'll die within the next turn. I will try and fly over to each one and cast cure wounds on them. Alright. Go ahead and roll an insight to check to perhaps determine what exactly they're doing. I see anything, any uh, sight of the queen, by the way, as I come down. You know she's far, uh, far distance, uh, but you imagine, you didn't see uh, anyone leave the castle. Okay. So if you had to guess, um, this is played by uh, pirate rules. The captain goes down with the ship. From what you can tell, they are stopping these creatures from moving. Whatever they're doing is negating magic, however, it's taking a toll on their body. They're literally... Um, how should I play... How should I state this? From what you can tell, they're using their magic to repulse these things from moving or acting. 
But the longer that you do this, the greater the strain on them takes. Some of them are weaker than others. So... I will go for the weakest one first and then go to the strongest one if I can. Surprisingly enough, it's not the one that looks like a child, but the one that looks like a robotic maid. What exactly do you do? Cast your wounds on them. Alright, that should sustain it for another two turns. Uh, Geral then states, Is there anything you can do to attack these things all at once? Uh, hang on. Can inspire you guys to perform battle of actions, but myself, not positively sure. Um, You need Byron reality. Which one looks the most damaged? Like, do any look like they're on the point of brink of death, or...? A second ago, you did see one of them move. And you see the woman uh, left with brown hair is... Uh, not bloody. Uh, beating sweat down her brow. She might have uh, magic, I'll... but she does not have a lot of it. The only thing I know is that uh, the thing of insightfulness gives advantage on melee or weapon attacks, but I don't know if this counts as a weapon attack or not. Give it a shot then, what? I don't really know. Are you song of insightfulness? Alright then. Let me roll something. Three. One, two. Oh, wow, that's just enough. With your Song of Insightfulness, you see that the three that were nearly down begin to rise up. They're not gaining momentum, but rather they're stabilized. You can tell they can do this for a while, but they are not going to last forever. Your best guess is roughly an hour, and then everyone will be depleted. But within that hour, you can bring someone back, come in and attack these things. That's a good enough time for you to regroup or run around and try to do something yourself. But right now, this. What's that? Sorry. Right now, these things are contained for an hour. After that, people will start falling. But thanks to your song, the three people that were nearly down have stabilized for that amount of time. I'm gonna rush in and check if the queen's okay real quick. Oops, grabbed an enemy. <laughs> and an enemy. Rushing pirate, uh, rushing pirate rules. Uh, rushing in. You do see that yes, this does follow pirate rules. However, there are two guards standing beside her, looking towards you. She does state, uh, "Hello, you're back. What are you doing here? Aren't, shouldn't you help the city?" As the, at the moment, the others are sorting that out. I came here as soon as I can because people were... Those things were attacking the castle. I took to the skies beforehand and informed Section 9 about uh, which areas we were being attacked the most. So hopefully their groups will now be going to those places. I thank you kindly, and I do appreciate it, but that is why Ramon sent out some of his guards to this site. A few of my men can take care of these things, but it will take some time. Which is why I'm having the guards in the front gate bar them for as long as possible. Keep them up with some of my magic, but I'm not sure how long it will last. And I'll have to 
keep being there. Um, it is up to you what you decide to do. If you can help keep them alive, I will appreciate it. But they do have a service, and if they do die, that is part of the responsibility. It is a grave thing that w may happen, but it is one they all know. Uh, how bad was the school attack looking? You saw a group of individuals fighting? You do know that the school itself is heavily magical. So there's a lot of people that could fight yeah. these things. That being said, um, you heard uh, Team Gamma has returned and has went and is at the school now. That doesn't mean they don't need help, so, but that does mean that there is a group there fighting. I was just about to say which would, in logical respect, be the place that has the least amount of help right now between Ramon's uh, orders and that. It would be um, probably the city square where two ice giants are fighting. Uh, no, an ice giant and a cloud giant. I'll um, just tell her that I'll try and go to the square and help as many people as I can because that seems to be the place that isn't getting the most attention right now, but I'll come back as soon as I'm possibly able to. She nods and states, Whatever happens, try to make sure you live. What it is something that everyone that's trying to protect the city knows, that doesn't mean it should happen. As you head out. And Cerberus enters. Cerberus, go ahead and roll initiative. Not exactly sure what you're gonna do. Is there already an issue? Yeah, but Cerberus hasn't rolled. Oh, sir, sorry. Ooh. Entering into the fray, you do take note that Halewu. Not. Oh, pff, wrong map. Entering into the fray, you do take note that. Uh, actually, have you seen. Yeah, you've seen Caitlyn with her armor. Uh, you see Caitlyn currently fighting a police officer as well as being enveloped by a strange blue liquid. Um, I'll give you a round. Um, before initiative starts, is there anything you're going to do? Uh, you said Holly's badge is visible. Yes. Yeah, okay. And the thing around Caitlyn, then, I will go and attack that. Okay. Nice. First hit, second hit, and an arm strike. All of those hit. Aim me straight towards this thing with your quarter staff and your hands. Each of them hit, but for some reason you feel as if half of it just moved as you moved. It's quite malleable. Um, your unarmed strikes are considered magical attacks now, right? Yes. With your unarmed strike, you're able to deal a significant amount of damage. Or staff would not be magical. Mm -hmm. But you did. At the start of the initiative, she looks towards you. Um, I don't know if she's seen Cerberus, though. You're fighting the enemy, so I'm going to roll an insight with advantage. Yeah, she considers you an uh, ally, at least. Uh, looking towards you, Cerberus, she states. I don't know who you are, but thanks. Keep them occupied. Right now, I don't know who this person is, but she's trying to take a child. I'm not going to let that happen. And whatever these things that are attacking them 
I am damn well sure not going to let them take them as well. Raising her buckshot again, she aims straight for Caitlyn. Uh, Caitlyn can't move, so I'm not going to give her dexterity. Sixteen plus three, you take nineteen points of damage, Caitlin. It is now your turn. You're muted. Take a D four fire damage. Mm hmm Fire. Okay. Um Yeah, I don't really mind being inside of the thing right now. Um So like so like what condition am I under? Well, your the condition you're under is technically called restrained. Okay, so I can still Um I'm going to have hold monster on this creature. No, not hold monster, banishment. Okay, because I'm not sure if that spell would work on this thing, but management might. What's my uh, roll? Uh, charisma saving throw. Oh, wait, this is the charisma one. Oh, you chose the wrong one. Should have gone with red. Ribbit. I mean, it's not that high, but it's higher than what it should be. Uh, no, it doesn't save. Three won't. <laughs> Three won't do it. Immediately, the creature around you just disappears. Uh, let's see. It does disappear, but for how long? Sure, One you minute. can see with the range spell, existing to see the Christmas saving throw, blah, 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 different demi plan. It, 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 it's concentration up to a minute, or if it's not from this plan and I keep it on for a minute, it goes back to its home plan. Yeah, that's what I thought. So after a minute, something happens, but that's a minute from now. Anything else? Yeah. Caitlin will move forward and say, oh, and say, open this now. All right. You say that and she looks t towards you. I need to you. get to Penelope. <laughs> You're not helping yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Looking towards you, she states, I don't care what you want. I am here to protect them. Cerberus. How hostile does Caitlyn look? Pretty hostile? Not very. Oh, okay. Then not very. Does Penelope see this? <laughs> I mean, general. in general, with her armor, when she's demanding that a door be open. <laughs> then I will hold my action for a stunning strike if Caitlyn attacks Holly. <laughs> or if Holly attacks Caitlyn. Okay. You don't have to hold your action to stunning strike. It's just, uh, it's like smite. You can do it whenever you hit. Oh, you're in range of her buckshot now, though. Holly looks towards you, Cerberus, and states, You might want to move. I'm about to shoot. Do you move? Cerberus will stay. I'll stand her ground. She puts her shot away because she's not going to shoot an ally. Uh, brings out her own cuffs and begins to try to handcuff Caitlyn. Uh, Caitlyn, athletics versus athletics or acrobatics versus hers. Uh, yikes. Yikes. I've been rolling a lot of 20s. <laughs> I was hoping you keep, you keep, you keep your, uh, your, your three rolls against me going. <laughs> I like those. Immediately restrained, you're unable to teleport. You technically are unable to change back, which is a problem. Um, no, if you want, before uh, the cuffs completely take form on your body, you can de-armor because you know these things are about to clamp onto you and there's no getting away from these things. And if I stay on, I stay on. I'm probably gonna fucking burn away. So yeah. I think I actually have to take them off. Okay. As they begin to clamp down on you, you realize this, and 
immediately remove the armor and she'll burn away. As they latch on, she realizes that who you are, they're still clamped on and they're staying clamped on because you literally were trying to fight against her. And then states, Caitlin? What the hell are you doing trying to take a kid? This is <laughs> that's my daughter. You have a daughter? Open the damn door. I can't. Once the spell's up, only the people inside can do it. But they can't hear a thing. We can't teleport inside. And they can't teleport out. The only people that can communicate is the people inside the building. So unless they decide to go towards the window, we have no way of getting back inside. That's why this is called a failsafe, in case I don't save them. Uh, are we still on initiative? I mean, for the next... Not really, but she's not letting you go. Uh, your turn. She takes out a wand, and as an action, she'll uh, give herself another spell slot. She has yeah. her hand on her gun, but she doesn't do anything. She Even goes up to the glass. Okay. And she just puts her hand on it. Immediately gets rebuffed by the magic circle. You can be near it, you just can't really touch it. Um, oh, it's on the barrier then? Yeah, okay. You can't actually knock on the thing, and even if you could, no sound would penetrate through the barrier. It's to prevent anyone from casting any verbal spells as well. Cerberus. Quickly writes down Fret and points with her staff to the barrier. Holly shakes her head no. No, right now that's the thing that's keeping them safe. Once it goes down, Cerberus starts goes... off. <laughs> <laughs> Second she says no, Cerberus starts off. Okay. You dart off and well Caitlin can hear this as you run away. And there she goes. Well, I was gonna say once it goes down, it's down for an hour. So if they turn it off, we need to make sure that everyone's safe. Looks towards Caitlin. Worried. She's just she's looking sorrowfully like at the barrier with a hand. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna roll something. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's what you get for not communicating, Caitlin. Hey. So. Okay. Aiming and looking around, you manage to find yourselves at the. I think it's this map. No, it's this one. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Let's see here. It was Relta, Little Kitty, and Byroth. Uh... Yeah, let's go with this one. And tune to the next destination, you see five individuals around. You see six mechanical automatons just beginning to attack. The elves seem to be surrounded, but they are fighting back. The one individual at the far left corner, uh, male elf, uh, black hair, uh, black clothes, uh, blonde hair, looks back at the person in the middle. Sir, I don't know what's going on, but right now we need to make sure you're safe. I you sit here, the one in the middle. I don't care. I'm here for my daughter, and damn it, I'm gonna make sure she's out here alive. Protect the city if you have to. But right now, my Penelope is all that matters to me. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you see all of them salute and go, Sir! And begin to attack these things. The automata? The automata. <clears throat> are they section 9 automata or are these just random robots? These are just random things that are attacking. 
Uh, go ahead and roll insight. I rolled two. Nice. Both of you can tell that they are quite powerful. Powerful enough to probably fight these things on their own, but if you help, you can uh, decrease the time it'll take them, allowing them to venture forwards. Or you having a moment to speak to them if you don't want to do it in fight, in the combat. Uh, that being said, you realize that the one in the middle kind of resembles Penelope a little. Which and is he clearly said her name. Uh, yes. Okay, so I think his name is either Rupert or Robert. But have we ever heard Caitlin say it to us? I don't remember. Um, that being said, the automaton do look like machines that are from the RNG department, but they are not uh, those machines. What Just space. What's going on here? <laughs> And for no other reason that Baroth is good at smashing machines, and I like that, I'm gonna smash one up. Roll initiative. As Relta, you say, what's going on here? Um, the man in the middle looks towards you as he doesn't even look at the automaton to his left, takes out a wand, shoots at it, and blows a hole straight through it. I don't know, but whoever you are, I'll pay you handsomely if you take these things down. Why are you doing it, though? I'm here to protect my daughter. Any good father would do the same. Why do they have your daughter, though? They don't. This city does. And I'll blast my way through the entire city if I have to in order to protect her. Sounds like good father to me. Also, Atomata are clearly attacking the city, so... Yep. All right, initiative. Why are my enemies rolling so low? Did I click me or the cat? I hope I click me. I click the cat. I'm sorry. Um. It was you. Okay, cool. All right, Byron, you're up first. How rare is that? Um, I'm just, I want to make sure I get this right, because I'm pretty sure I do do extra damage to this automata. Automatons! I think it's just a D8. Well, maybe I made that one. And I can't find it, so whatever. I'm not going to waste any spells, just regular old attack on the one closest to me. Uh, I guess, which would be that guy? Yeah. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven does it. And once a turn, I get to make it... Uh, right, that's the wrong thing. I'm pretty sure that's the wrong thing. It's just supposed to be 1d8, that was 2d8. Okay. You can tell that the first two damage, the fire and piercing, do seem to be doing a great amount. The radiant damage doesn't really seem to do much. Or at least not as much as you thought. As you begin to attack... And... Yeah, I'll let that... Whoa, and... Mm, okay, because... Yes. I'm just still trying to find that storm time thing. Continue. As you begin to attack them, you see that their eyes literally shift from one section to your destination without moving their entire form. Their head literally takes a 180. Oh, and uh, the holy weapon thing? That was the wrong thing. It's supposed to be an extra... Oh shit, no. I'm just confused. Continue. Okay. That was it. Uh, movement or bonus action? Yeah, I'll move up close. I'll get in between the one I attack. So. Route tap. Yep. Your turn. Okay. 
I want to try conjure elemental. Ooh. So uh, how many? There's a bunch of them. Right? There's a few you can choose, but it depends on what you're trying to do. There be like enemies. Oh yeah, there's a lot of enemies. It's all the little robot -y guys. One, yes. Two, a bunch of them. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, I want to try to. So. I found it. Huh? He takes an additional 13 damage. Okay. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so. I hope I'm doing this. I think it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna, yeah, I wanna conjure them. So what do I have to do? You just choose an elemental, um, challenge rating five. If you want, I can do it for you. Yeah. Um, you just choose fire, water, ice. It just has to be below rating five. I'm gonna pick ice. Because they're little robot guys, maybe they'll increase their little gears. Okay. Um, I'll give you the strongest, so I'll give you a rating five. Okay. Bigger than that. <laughs> now I'm like, uh, that chick from Frozen. If you want to name it. That was a really it. terrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's like the one Disney movie I <laughs> It bows towards so you, bad. and you hear within your mind, What is the objective I am here to do? Take out all the robot -y guys. Or as uh, many as you can. Understood. Are you in your turn? Yes. Alright. Taking initiative. You see that the creature aims straight towards the one on the right. Looking straight towards it, it brings out what appears to be an ice lance and just pierces through it. The robot then turns towards it, latches on, and blows itself up, dealing... 3d6. I rolled low. It does take some damage, still love it. but it's still alive. <laughs> Looking towards you, uh, Rauta states, Initiative 1-6 down. Continue? Yes. Continuing to operate, and takes its last movement to the next one. The man looks and towards... Can... Go ahead. Am I, am I able to use an action to shoot my gun? You are, but you took your action to summon an elemental. That's cool. I just wanted to know, kind of, for next turn. Mm hmm Okay, sorry. It's fine. Okay. The man looks towards you, Ralta, nods, uh, mal mouths, thank you, and aims straight for this creature. Yeah. Takes out his wand again, realizes he's out of charges, and just jabs the wand straight into, you assume, the eye socket of the robot. You see that the others are fairly... Uh, one brings out a mace, another brings out a elven bow, a blade, and then two daggers. They all do a significant amount of damage. The creatures now take their turn. The raw begins to... <laughs> I forgot I, na I named that attack. Um, the robot next to your elemental brings out two of its fists. In a gyrating motion, it begins to pelt into it, shattering a good amount of damage. If you want to know what the attack is, I just called it Sock and Bob. <laughs> it's a miss. Too far away, has to move. Hits. Currently has to roll a d6. Okay. You see the person that jabbed his wand in, the one protecting his daughter. 
gets immediately bear hugged by this thing and it blows up in his face. Dingling 11 points of damage. He bleeds out, but he's not dead. Little Kitty takes his turn. Emmy, straight for your elemental. He latches onto his leg and climbs on top. Climbing straight on top of its head. Uh, nah, its shoulders. It meows as if it's trying to roar. And immediately you see the elemental shine. It's coral blue into a more piercing blue. Almost as if ice. The ice grew even harder and stronger. Oh. Byron. I shall attack the creature again. Nineteen. Nineteen does it. Uh, eleven plus thirteen. All right. Amy Street for the creature er, that's next to the uh, Elven marksman. No, he's a marksman. Uh, jabbing straight through with your tempest. It pierces through, and luckily enough, the piercing and fire damage do take effect. Do you try to do anything else? Um, just beyond the bonus, plus 13 force damage that it takes. No, I'm good. Okay. You do see that it's halfway down. Thankfully enough. Railtap. Yes. Um... I always forget that I have this thing. Shillelagh. Yeah, I always forget to do that. And you do that because it's a serious battle. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just a can't trip. Um, and I want to shoot. Shoot. Where's my. Oh, the wrong thing. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Better. <laughs> Somebody else is controlling. Um, so yeah, I want to shoot. Which one's close by? This one's almost dead, right? But he's not quite dead. Not quite the one that's uh, at that store, but not dead. Okay, so I want to try to shoot that guy. Okay. How do I use my? Do it. 20 does hit. Cool. And now I have to roll. What is the. You just hit stake thrower. The words underneath the 20. Thank you. Nice. Um, The one next to Byroth, right? Emmy straight towards Byroth. Byroth, you turn around uh, and see that the cat is now on an ice giant thing. Turning around to see what Route is doing, immediately you almost get hit with a stake. Uh... No, I think you're actually using the bullets. A bullet right on the left side of your face goes around you and hits the creature next to you. It immediately tries to make a dexterity saving throw. What? Fails falls down to the ground, and explodes. It's very dramatic, but with a 20. I'm <laughs> <laughs> super sorry. Who shot that out? Before we move on, we will go to... Route... Not Rauta. Um, Halloween win Cerberus. I mean, Caitlin. Yeah. No? I was going to say, wait, Hollywood's there too? Yes? Hollywood's Cerberus. Oh, Cerberus is in heaven. Oh. oh, no, wait, oh yeah, Caitlyn. Did she just bug her out? No, Caitlyn's in cuffs. 
service. This is at the school. I'm not at the school. No, this is in the or school. Square. This is the city square. Looking around, yeah. Halloween, you do see that the city is on fire. Um, Cerberus, looking around where you're at, you see that the city is on fire. To your south, both of you can see a frost giant and a cloud giant currently attacking. And you see section 9 of uh, personnel attacking these things. You've seen these people in the office, or at least Halloween has servers, you've seen them once. Do I know anything about these kind of giants from Arcana knowledge? Uh, what's your bonus to Arcana? It is, let me check. Seven. You know these things are resistance to bludgeoning, slashing, piercing, um, certain elemental attacks, like anything having to do with ice and water don't really work either or are reduced by half they are more or less easy enough to hit but it takes a while to bring them down and they do a boatload of damage and Halley we will start flying over and shout out to everyone what she knows. Or, uh. And. Fucking attempt a polymorph, I guess. Okay. Into what? Uh. Try and polymorph this one into. Uh. Cat. I think he's just like cats. Wisdom? Wisdom check, right? It's a, it's a wisdom, it's a wisdom check. check. All right, let me look at its character sheet. There's a plus three. Oh, dang. Just passes. I probably most just... not doing anything today. <laughs> as you play, yeah, so for some reason I'm rolling really well. Which is great for me, but bad for you. As you fly over it, trying to cast Polymorph, it aims straight for you. It nearly reaches you as you basically hover further on top in the air, making sure it can't reach you. However, it's concerned more about the people on the ground as they are in formation, literally shooting at it. Looking back at these people, Haliwu, you can tell that these are the... This group is the Wetworks team. So while they are low in number, they are great with teamwork. Polymorph doesn't work. I'm just gonna focus on using some of it insight. Then, uh, Cerberus, is there anything you're doing? Cerberus will dart in and attack the closest one to her. All right. Which would be that one. Uh, do, do, do it. Is the Song of Inspiration thing going to be affecting my attacks? or? Yep, you get advantage whenever you want. In the next 10 minutes. Is that every attack or just one attack? Just one attack. Until oh, okay. I redo it. And... I need a... Con save, please. Storm giant. 
Yes, it is. You said frost and cloud, didn't you? Oh, right, 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 right. My bad. Frost giant. Leave it to the fear ball to get pedantic about the exact type of giant. Wisdom, right? Con. Oh, oh, man, that's a bummer. If it was wisdom, it's zero. If it's con, it's plus five. Ah, uh, 17. It's stunned. It fails. Nice. Someone uh, hit a pressure point right in the ankle. Uh, that's one key point down. I will then use a another key point for fury of blows uh turn it back on to i think it's normal hang on stun do i gain an advantage on stun things i mean you should <sighs> Are you okay? i'm just double checking the conditions I think you said last time it was advantage uh, on yeah, hits. Yeah, crows have advantage. Yeah, but they fail... Uh, they automatically uh, fail dex and strength. Yeah. Does that hit? It doesn't. It's close oh, Okay. Now. And second hit from Fury of Blows. That does it. And I... Need a deck save which automatically fails, so it is now knocked prone. As you want to see if it actually fails, and it does. Uh, okay. It's and that's how you then... Until the end of your next oh. turn, right? Yep, stun until the end of my next turn, and my final quarter staff hit. Aiming with your unarmed strike seem to be doing a great job, but as you splash it in the head with its quarterstaff as it leans down, it didn't do as much damage as you would have liked. And now that is my turn. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Cloud Giant's fine, she aims straight for the... Necrotic Swordsman. I mean, straight for her, she... Oh, she doesn't do so well. She grabs onto Fawn and simply tosses her straight onto this building, dealing 4d6 points of damage, 2d6 of falling. She's fine, but that wasn't very nice. The other one's paralyzed, so can't do a thing. Uh, so NPC turns, Denna aims straight towards her, shoots, strikes, piercing two blades of poison into her. Let's see. Uh, they don't fail con saves automatically, right? Uh, no. Stunned is, uh, incapacitated. It's a can't move and can only speak falteringly. It fails strength and deck saves, and attack rolls have advantage against it. Um, what is incapacitated? An incapacitated creature can't take actions or reactions. And because it's prone when that loads, uh, its only movement option is to crawl unless it stands up. It has disadvantage on attacks, and attack rolls have advantage on it if it's a melee within five feet. Nothing about failing con or anything like that. It's just strengthened decks. Okay, that's what I thought. Nara, then, you see Nara turn. Um, you see that he's rather handsome, kind of a yang T folk. Immediately turns into a giant snake, latches onto this thing's arm, and bites down. See... Does it automatically pass? So let's roll. Oh, fails! And immediately you see that this giant's arm, its veins begin to turn green and it's crawling up its arm. 
as Nara turns back, or at least lets go. Barda aims with her trident, strikes, misses unfortunately, Viola brings out her bow, hits, good enough. I have advantage. Oh, that's right! Um, Just a reminder. Oh, nice, hits. You see Barda takes out her trident, bites into her skin, and you see a wave of ice form into her. Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything, but it looks cool. Viola strikes and uses... Yeah. Thorn arrow shoots in and then vines begin to tendril around her arm when it sinks in and bites into her flesh. Halloween. Uh, how many people used that advantage last turn? Everyone but you. I'm going to rebuff it. And I'm going to give Cerberus Bardic Inspiration. Neat. Go over here. Yeah. Can I go Hang on. You can get close to her. 60 feet movement on the broom. Okay. Um, as you finish your round, and I think you gave bonus action, yeah. Uh, Cerberus and Halloween, you can tell that they've been fighting these things for a while. Thankfully enough to their teamwork, they are down halfway from their total health. So the giants aren't doing it extremely well. That being said, they still have a heck of a ton of health points left, so it's honestly a, a fight of who can last the longest. Cerberus. Uh, first two attacks with the quarterstaff. Twenty and thirty. And a unarmed strike for her second uh, for her offhand attack, sorry. There we go. And that's my turn. Okay. Her staff does a good amount of damage, but it's doing less than you would imagine. Your unarmed strike pierces in and almost does the exact same amount of damage as both of your quarter staff attacks. A little less actually. Uh, <clears throat> but it does strike true. It is stunned. Uh, do you do anything or not? Otherwise, it will be unstunned at the end of this turn. Change done? Uh, no, just those attacks. Okay. The giants take their turn. Immediately, she is unstunned. She's also on the ground, technically, so she uses half her movement to get up. Looking towards you, you do seem to be a new person. You don't seem to be that injured. So she immediately goes straight towards you. Grabbing onto her battle axe, she swings down and it swings hard. It is a plus 10. Let's see if it'll hit. 23. Miss. <laughs> nice. You maybe need to take a step to the right and it sinks down into the ground, carving a 3 inch gap straight through. Looking straight towards you, she swings again. Uh, 27. Yeah, that hits. Okay. I thought you were going to cast shield or something. Alright. That's not a spell I can do, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Let's see a d10 with her bonus of 8. So that's 6 plus 8. Uh, you take 14 points of damage. Oh, okay. NPC's turn. Fawn looks up, turns around, aims straight for the other giant, takes out her dark blade, and swings straight towards it. Halloo, you see... Well, ha mm, Cerberus, you can see this as well. Crazy perception. Uh, the blade aims straight towards her, and a massive shadow just goes straight towards her. It cuts into the giant's shadow, and... It hurts her. Physically, it hurts her. How you just saw Fawn 
basically stab her, the giant front with her shadow inside of the giant shadow. You then see the other team members aim and strike. Donna hits, Hugh hits, Nara hits, Barda. Oh, Barda keeps missing. Let me roll again. Hits. And Viola. Viola misses. And misses again. Ugh. You see that they get. Yeah, that's a pretty good amount of damage. You see that they do a pretty good amount of damage. In fact, the one that Cerberus is near is close to that door. A good amount of damage could strike her down, but maybe not quarter staff wise. You then see Fawn, Fawn looks towards you, Hollywood states, uh, Thanks, I don't know what you're doing, but that song is amazing. It's your turn now. I finally get to use the thing I've wanted to use for a while now. So how do you... <laughs> the mantle of in majesty. And she's going to cast as a bonus... I think it's a bonus action. To cast command as a bonus action for... This giant to lay down. A single okay. word, by the way, but you could say prostrate or kneel, bow. Uh, hmm. Sleep, I guess, then? Does it have a save, is what I'm wondering. I think it's a wisdom save. I'm trying to check command, but my... Uh, wisdom. It's wisdom. Yeah. A wisdom saving throw. You speak a one word command to a creature you can see within range. It must succeed a wisdom saving throw or follow the command. So anything like um, drop its weapon, flee, grovel, the target falls prone and then ends its turn, halt. It'll be grovel um, then. Approach yeah, grovel. as well. Grovel's a good one. Okay. It's wisdom. It has no wisdom. So straight up roll. 17. Fails. Immediately you see the creature go down a knee and goes into a fetal position. I did not see this coming. It's kind magic! Of, it's kind of messed up, but you do hear it whimpering. For whatever that's worth. Anything else, Halloween? You still have an action. Bonus and then movement. Oh, oh, wait. Of no, no bonus, but you do have an action and a movement. Song of insightfulness. All right. Then. Redoing it again, and I'll stay where I am. Cerberus. Quarter staff. Quarter staff unarmed. All right. All of those hit. With your quarter staff, your quarter staff, <sighs> you strike again and again, getting damage, but not a good amount. Oh, let's see, half of nine. I'll I will also five, half of move around to seven, that grid. Four, five, six, seven. Thirteen is thirteen. Oh wow! Actually, you did a lot more than I thought you would. It's not dead, but it is. Bleeding heavily. Um, attacking it doesn't uncharm it, right? Uh, it say it made the same throw, so it's not technically charmed, but it's only a condition that affects it until the start of its next turn. Yeah, it's not so charmed. It's, it's just. Right. Back to normal once its turn begins. Okay. Its yeah, turn it was, begins. It immediately gets up, uh, wipes its face away, looks at Halibu, looks mad, takes its 
axe and throws it straight towards you. It's not oh, hang on. to be. When it. did it go prone? Uh, when how do we said gravel? It takes the um, gravel action on its next turn. Yeah, it's so uh, follow the command on its next turn. So it sh I shouldn't have had advantage apart from on the first hit. Oh, oh, then it still hit. And us. now it would take its turn to grovel and lay down. Um, everything I said, reverse it, goes on the ground, fetal position, still holds up. Um, it actually cuddles its axe like a teddy bear. Feel bad yet? <laughs> the cloud Absolutely giant, not. The cloud giant looks towards you, Halibu. It states, Clearly you are the most problematic. It turns its hand straight towards you. See here, Cloud Giant character sheet. Oh, are you casting command? No, no, no. Uh, just so everyone can see what it does. If I were you, Zaya, I'd drag command into your spell list for future. This is my spell list. Oh, okay. Posted it as well. Did you? Thank you. No, you only posted, posted Mantle of Majesty. You didn't post oh, okay, command. Sorry. Oh, that's so stupid. But I like it. It immediately casts Misty Step and it's right next to you. It, it can that... stay on the house without the house collapsing? <laughs> no, clearly it's a cloud one more turn, it will break. But right now it's on it. It takes out a morning star and aims straight towards you with its plus 12. That's not a lot, but uh, 21. It still hit. She has a 16 AC. All right. Um, that's 3d8 plus 8. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, How do we die? 19. That's not bad. It does have multi attack, so I'm going to try to strike again. 26. Oh, sorry, 25. Yeah, yeah it still hits. 3d8 plus 8. 15 and then 8, 23 total. Okay. NPC's turn. Immediately, Fawn goes over. Um, acrobatics check. Barely passes. Grabs onto you and states, Do you care if we leave? Like, on the ground. Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> you both teleport onto the ground. That's her action. Nara moves over, sh can't be attacked, moves over, can't be attacked, moves over, can't be attacked. I'm gonna do their team action. It's gonna be a little weaker because Fawn can't contribute. But it's still gonna be cool. Weaker than I thought it'd be. Immediately, you see everyone point weapons straight towards her. Nora, being a giant snake, begins to go straight towards the house. Breaks the feet underneath, and she begins to slowly fall as he breaks through the house. Hugh brings out what appears to be a sniper rifle and pierces the top of her head. Goes clean through and throughout. Donna quickly goes straight towards the cloud giant. <coughs> Grabs her blades and sinks them straight into her shoulders as she casts magic missile on her blades. Barda with her trident just throws it at her, causing a wave to cause her to fall back. And Viola with her bow aims and pierces straight towards her heart, calling, causing her to fall further back. She takes a total of 27 damage, but as the force of one, two, three individuals cause her to move 
back and fall down faster. Takes an additional 4d6. So that is 30, 41, and then 2d6 for falling damage. As she falls down to the ground, embedded into a pillar, keeping the house up, but not anymore as they clearly just destroy that house. Halibu. Oh wait, uh, I don't think Cerberus is gone yet. Uh, not since Halibu got teleported. Okay, uh, Cerberus. So the one in front of me is still up? The one in front of you is well, on the ground crying. Laying prone, but it's alive. Barely. Okay. Non-lethal. First hit. Second hit. And third hit. Wow. I will say with the first two attacks, it's not dead. With the last one, dead by seven. So how would you like to take her down? Well, non-lethally, so just hitting a pressure point to knock it out. All right. Hitting with your cord staff doesn't seem to do much. However, with your unarmed strike, you pierce where the neck is, causing causing her to nearly go into paralysis-like state, causing her mind to just shut down. You hit it again to make sure she doesn't die from this, causing her to breathe, but her mind was shut down for that time, so now she's just simply unconscious. The other cloud, the cloud giant's dead, though, but the frost giant, the frost giant has maybe some explaining to do. As we move over to da, 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 da. Caitlin, that's me. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Looking towards you, Holly states. So what are you doing here? I have this place protected. She called me. Ah, damn it. She could have said something before I told her to activate the spell. Look, right now they're safe for the next hour. We need to make sure they continue to be safe by protecting this city. If you want to be here, fine. I suppose I can have her mom take care of her. How much ammo do you have left? A good amount? Why? Okay. How are you how are you at fighting crowds? Fairly decent? Why do you ask? Okay. Holly. Take care of him. Where's the next area that needs help? Maybe the school. All I know is Ramon told me that he sent the three girls here after the school was about to be attacked. I came by to make sure that Nala and her team managed to get them to this to the site. However, I don't know if the school's safe in or not. I need 10 minutes to cast something. All right. And I won't be able to put my armor again for the rest of the day. I mean, it looked like it was injuring you, so that might not be a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, sure go over this corner and she'll uh, gesture for her to take off these shackles. If you're leaving, I'm taking them off, but if you come back, I'm taking them off, putting them back on. You don't seem to be in the right state of mind right now. She unshackles you. She's just casting her spell. It's, it's gonna take ten minutes, so... Alright. Uh, before I'm... Um, 
you start, uh, she states, so how long is that thing going to be gone? If it's not from this plane forever. You see her take out what appears to be a small Tommy gun? As you begin to spell, uh, to cast your spell. A minute later, the thing comes back and she immediately shoots out round after round after round after round, giving it a surprise attack. For each round, that is 30 rounds. An additional d6 for each round. I don't want to do the math. Hmm? What? Well, 30 d6? Per basically. I mean, even with its resistances, it's not going to survive that. So this thing's down. <clears throat> see, rolling scenario two. Nice, they managed to take it down. Scenario three. Scenario three is not looking too good. Rolling again. Ooh, just barely. After 10 minutes, you take note that the enemy around you has been taken down. One of the people in the site has been knocked out, but not dead. Hmm. I don't know what you're doing for 10 minutes, but the 10 minute elapses. Uh, she says at the end of it, uh, come forth my steed. There, there he is. And... There you go. I'm so going where now. Where are you heading? Uh, you never actually told me the place that needs the most help other than the school, so the school. The only places I know right now that are being attacked are the school, the castle, and who knows where else. So I'll go to the school then. Alright, good luck. Uh, where's the person I was knocked out at? At the far l back. Uh, Molly. Uh, uh, Molly. I'm gonna go up to her and... Finish the job. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm gonna heal her. Alright, before you leave, you I'm level. I'm level with the power, so that's 15 my ultimate hit point. All right, usually enough heal her, she comes back. Clover is not exactly here. Um, looking up, the tiefling looks towards you and states, uh, thanks for that. I did not want to go to the hospital. That's okay. She And she gets back on the horse. As long as you protect this place, I'll protect you. And she, uh, oh, that's the only one of them. And she'll, she'll start flying off. Going shield one dial. Oops, I think I put you in the wrong map. Hey, this is this, this is a, a, a town square. Yeah, it's a town square. My bad. Hey, look, it's got a hat. I want that hat. Immediately surrounding you, you do see that a whole bunch of people are here. You see what appears to be Red Eye and her team, Clara, Penny the Dragon, Star. Uh, I forgot her name. I think I have it listed somewhere. I'm just gonna look at the token. Oh yeah, Dara. And Bleep, already in, about to attack. You see the older students fighting off these giants. You see two hill giants with massive bugbears, not bugbears, sorry, um, dire bears as hats. You also see two, you're not sure what they are. They could be simple giants themselves, but they might be something else specifically. But looking around, you do see the older students prepared to attack. You do see Team Gamma 
also ready to strike. Penny, the actual dragon, prepared to attack, and even Bleep is ready to fight. All said and done, the next set of rounds with Bleep and Penny at the helm might not take that long as we end the session for today. Hey.